Hello everybody, welcome to episode 21 of the Dead Pixel podcast. It's me as ever, Mr Brown, and this week, for those that have been following us recently, uh, we're doing a series of shows on the Left, left Wing UK. Um, each week, it's not by design, it's just by whoever can come on at the time, but each week we seem to be going a little bit further to the left. This week, I mean, you can't really have a series like this without in- inviting the Communist Party, and thankfully... We've got a candidate for a parliamentary candidate for Plymouth, Sutton and Devonport. She represents the Communist Party of Britain. Her name is Laura Jane Rosington. And I would like to welcome her tonight. So hello, Laura Jane. Hi, oh, yeah. How are you doing? You okay? Yeah, yeah, good. And you? I'm good, thank you very much. So, um, Laura Jane, as you know, you've been invited to speak about the Communist Party of Britain. Uh, yep. Before we get involved in all that, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and, you know, how you got into politics and, and whatnot? Um, yeah, sure. Well, um, I'm 18. I'm a student at Plymouth City College at the minute, finishing off my A-levels. Um, how I got into politics? Well, basically by being a somewhat devious but curious child. <laughs> my, okay. my stepfather is very... Um, very political and he used to um, sit on the message boards on Yahoo I think it was on the politics message boards and you know trying to extend my bedtime I'd go over and sit next to him and go dad dad what are you talking about and he'd explain to me you know all sorts of different all sorts of different things and um, he'd talk to me about his experiences in the miners strike and I suppose just as I got older and my understanding you know developed more and more I thought you know yeah I want to be a part of this. Okay. And is, is your old man a communist then? Yeah, he's in the Communist Party as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, brilliant. So it's kind of a, a family heritage then? <laughs> yeah, if you like. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And did you, did you mention he was, he was part of the miners' uh, what union? Or he was a miner? Or... No, he wasn't um, a miner himself, but he well, he t- t- took part very heavily during the miners' strike. Right. You know, okay. Yeah, yeah. So in in the miners during the eighties, went on the strikes and everything. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Um, okay. So, in regards to the Communist Party, I mean, the first obvious question for someone who knows a little bit about left wing politics mm. is communism. It's got a great heritage. Yeah, fantastic heritage on the left. Obviously, it's one of, one of the major powerhouses of the left, if not the major powerhouse. Um, traditionally, I mean. But yeah. within, within the UK, it's been split a few times, hasn't it? And there's also there's that question when it comes to communism, whether we're talking about we're talking about um, Leninism, Stalinism, or even Trotskyism. So, for someone who's not too sure about the yeah. Communist Party of Britain, um, which sort of philosoph- philosophical camp is is uh, the Communist Party of Britain? Is it purely Leninist, or is it? Does it go into Stalinism or indeed Trotskyism? Well, I mean, it's predominantly Marxist-Leninist. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, of course, we use materials that have come from other people, like um, Stalin's. Uh, oh, what's it called? His book on materialism. The name escapes me, but yeah, okay. I mean, we we do incorporate materials from you know, uh, uh, other communists, but yeah. the party itself is predominantly Marxist-Leninist. Right. It's just that, I mean, obviously, within historical terms, there's been literally people killed in, within yeah. communism yeah. for, you know, uh, purporting strains of Trotskyism, mm. uh, and also as well with the collapse of the Soviet Union, there's been a kind of a self-reflection in a lot of communist parties that kind of... Um, disavowed Stalinism. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just trying to understand, you know, just for just for the listeners really, and, and for voters and, and whatnot, you know, at coming elections, what they're actually um, what they're actually getting involved in here. So if somebody was, say, a Trots, Trotskyist, mm. would the Communist Party of Britain be be for them, or is it sort of like no? Actually, we stop 
okay, you might use some tenets of Trotskyism, but are we talking sort of philosophically? Um, are we talking it's mainly stops at Lenin, the Communist Party of Britain, it's, it's Marxist Leninist, and then, you know, we'll kind of leave the rest to other pe people's own discretion? Um. Or is he some fundamental tenets that are Stalinist? Is he fundamental to... Because, I mean, for people that don't know this, the biggest um, argument between uh, Stalin and Trotsky at the, at the time, at yeah. their time, um, other than, obviously, like, egos and jealousy and all that, but, you know, some of the, th the theoretical issue seemed to be um, Trotsky's idea of continuous revolution yeah. versus Stalin's socialism in one country. Now mm -hmm. that that seem, that has actually been the, the death of a hell of a lot of communists, depending on which camp side of you know which camp that you're actually in. Um, I'm wondering, is that even relevant today, or is it just a case of we're communists now? The past is the past. We are these these particular ideals that come from Marx, Lenin, uh, Engels, and whatnot, and they are the fundamentals. And anything post say. 1930, you know, is really by the by. What's your thoughts on that? Um, well, I think obviously the past is the past, and I think that's something the communist parties really need to get over, okay. um, you know, uh, to move forward. Um, is that bridge building being, being made in any way that you know about? Because, I mean, there, there are particularly Trotskyist type parties, isn't it? Like uh, the Socialist Workers' Party, I believe, is a, is a yeah. Trotskyist party. Is that bridge building occurring in any way, do you know? Or? Well, the Communist Party would be happy to work with anybody who's willing to work with us. You know, um, obviously uh, there will have to be some compromises made in order to do that. Mm -hmm. But you know, um, that's that's going to happen in any kind of left alliance. You know, you, you're going to have to make some compromises. And, yeah, I mean, we often do work with other groups um, supporting each other, especially on um, a more local basis. So, okay. Yeah, All it, right, it, okay. It does happen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm glad to hear that because, obviously, one of, the, one of the fundamentals of me starting this podcast, really, was trying to understand the... the the sort of subtle differences between left-wing groups yeah, for, my, yeah. for my own personal, you know, education to see, like, what exactly are they, why, why are we not all joining together, you know, that type of thing. But what you're yeah. saying is, on a local level, at the very least, yeah. um, what Communist Party members, they deal with other left-wing groups and there's no problem at that level, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I mean, as long as we can keep it civil, <laughs> okay. you know, not have petty arguments and just make the compromises and deal with the task in hand, yeah. we are more than capable of working together. Okay. Now, obviously, my, if, if I was to, say, be interviewing now someone from the Socialist Workers' Party, let's say, mm. I would bet my bottom dollar that they would have a very similar type attitude in the sense that they would say, perhaps, we're happy to work with anybody that will, you know, willing to compromise and work with us yeah. so you know it always seems like there's a reasonable p group of people and yet you know there's still a separate there's still a communist party there's still yeah. a socialist workers party and yet you know when you speak to people on an individual basis like yourself um you always seem so open and accommodating for compromise and whatnot um have you any ideas or theories why the bridges never do seem to get built, even though everybody seems to be wanting that to happen. Just in your own opinion, you know, and obviously you're not, a, not on behalf of the Communist Party, everything that comes out of your mouth, of course, but, you know, your own, your own personal opinion, do you anything, what do you think it might be that... Well, I, I don't know, from personal experience on a local level, I mean, we've had trouble in the past where other groups try to sort of dominate or monopolize over work that's supposed to be doing done together right it's, it's almost you know becomes a sort of recruiting game you know come and join us but that's not the point the point is we're working together yes we're separate but we're working together you know um 
and it generally comes down to the same petty arguments over and over again of the past days. Can you can you got a summary of any of those particular arguments that you do hear from the past? Like what what is it that's that keeps coming up time and time again? Well, um, the big one between communists and um, anarchist groups is that of Kronstadt in right. um, in the Soviet Union. Okay, so so you literally in today's political small political circles of the of the extreme left. Yeah. You're still talking about crumb yeah, stuff. Yeah. Right? Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, this could be the problem, you know. It's, yeah, uh, no, it absolutely is the problem. I mean, yeah. first, I'm absolutely sick to death of arguing, you know, things right. that happened so many years ago where yeah. we can just get in, over it. In guys. Russia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. No, well, th thanks for that honesty there. Um, okay. So, for you personally, I was, I was just wondering about, like, when, when I was getting the Communist Party on. So, for somebody like yourself, hmm. not only have you chose, you've, you've kind of made two political decisions that I think, when, when people join the Communist Party, they seem to make two political decisions. Hmm. First one they make is to join the Communist Party over Socialist Parties, Anarchist Parties, yeah. uh, you know, the Green Party, that's the first one. But it's kind of related to the previous question as well, but because there's so many splits within that umbrella of Communism, yeah. yeah, you've also made the choice to become a, com a communist party of Britain. So that's like a second choice. So his first choice was to to join the communist, you know. Yeah. And then the second one is within communism to join the communist uh, British party. Now I know I know you said um, before you, you, your father was, is a communist member. Is it well, a, is it as simple as you just followed in his footsteps, or was he something right, fundamental? No, we joined the party at the same time. Ah, um, right, okay. About yeah. three years ago. Um, this was, it was sort of a political journey we took together to be Okay, honest. brilliant. So it can you just, yeah, just talk us through how you got to the Communist Party of Britain out of all the other Communist parties. Why did well, you choose them? Well, we were going to various different left-wing um, public meetings and events that were held um, across Plymouth, you know, our local city. Mm -hmm. um, and we went to a Communist Party of Britain where Rob Griffiths, our general secretary, was giving a talk and um, it just rang our bells really. I mean, then we got to got chatting with um, local members and thought, yeah, you know, this is, this is where we feel at home, this is where we feel we can make a difference. So it was literally done, happened across it and just felt, yeah, this is, this is, this is where we need to be. Okay. So you went to a, quite a number of, you know, left-wing forums, debates, meetings, and, yeah. Whatnot, and, and yet it was the Communist Party of Britain. Who was the talker again that you said you liked? Uh, Rob Griffiths. He's our general secretary. He's your general secretary, right. And it was something about Rob, the way he was speaking and whatnot, that just sort yeah, of... Yeah. Okay, that, no, that's brilliant. Um, he's not someone I know specifically, but he's a really good orator, is he, yeah? Oh, he's brilliant, yeah, yeah. No, he's, he's great on a whole load of levels because he's just very very human and that can be said for most of um communist party members you know okay so for those that don't know and that's me included i'll be honest what is the actual structure in the communist party of britain from the top to where you know down to yourself what would be the structure for people oh, to understand it's it, to be honest i think it's probably the most democratic party in britain um okay. it it works um Every decision is made collectively, um, you know, and um, whatever the outcome, everybody backs it, mm -hmm. you know, even if you did contest it, but that's because of how, how a real do workers' democracy has to work in order for it to function. Um, but it starts at ground level, so um, you'll have uh, various branches according to where you are, so we've got Exeter and South Devon and North Devon and the rest around here, and then you you um, elect members of each branch to form a district committee. Mm -hmm. So um, your uh, ours is Devon, um, Devon, and, and I think that incorporates Cornwall as well. I think, but um, yeah, then so that makes up a district committee, and from the district committees, you have a national committee, um, and. Uh, 
political committee, and so on and so forth. Um, and uh, every every two years when we have Congress, um, every branch gets to submit resolutions and amendments um, and they get they then get debated at Congress, which mm -hmm. each branch um, elects two delegates to go to. So it is it's done very, very democratically right from the bottom. Um, OK. OK. And who's actually the head of the Communist Party of Britain? That would be Rob Griffiths. Rob Griffiths is the head, right? Okay, so he's the he's the top dog, yeah. Yeah. So only officially. <laughs> <laughs> so fr from him down, then how does the structure, how does it look? So un under Rob, what who who have you got there? Is it like um, is it like a an overseeing committee of, of sorts? Oh, the, so, the executive committee, the, yeah. The executive committee, and who who's how many is on that, and who how do they get elected? Uh, how many is on that? Uh. Or is it loads? I'm not sure of the exact number. Maybe roughly 20? Um, I'm not entirely sure okay. how many are on okay. it. It's a, it's a fairly substantial body then underneath Rob, yeah? yeah? But um, uh, they, members get elected, um, well, they get nominated, mm -hmm. and then at, con at each Congress, because it changes every two years, um, at Congress, they'll get elected by everybody who turns up. So you vote for who you want to be on the executive committee. Okay, so you've got Robert at the top, and you've got like a, a, an executive committee. Yeah. Then below that, it's just sort of branches and branch members. Uh, national districts. Yeah, yeah. National district. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Um, now, with this particular question, it's one I've thought of often, actually, but it's, it's yeah. one I've heard of before as well. Now, like I say, there's not a left-wing party in the world that, other than the com that's got the history, the rich history of communism, you know, the Communist Party around the world, is a, it went as high as any left-wing group has ever been. Yeah. You know, um, and probably ever, could ever, probably ever will be. Um, the thing is about it, and the collapse of the Soviet Union, mm. um, it's almost as if, and I'm going to give you an example in a minute as to what, what I'm getting at, it's almost as if it's now an, a tainted word. And when I say yeah. word, I don't mean a tainted as in an idea. Yeah. I'm talking about the linguistic word. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Know what I mean, yeah? Yeah. Um, now... An example of this, well, this first struck me this many years ago, probably about 15 years ago, uh, where I actually said I was a communist. People said, you know, what are you? I said, I'm a communist, yeah, because yeah. Uh, at that time I'd, I'd just read um, Che Guevara's autobiography yeah, yeah. Um, and that, that type of thing. And I was right into, you know, the com for me, just getting into left wing politics, communism was all communism. So I used to say, I'm a communist. Um, and somebody, a young girl, well, I'll say young girl, she's like 25 at the time, so, you know, a woman, a woman, who should, you know, should know things at 25. Yeah. Um, I was saying to someone about, I was a communist, and she said to me, you're a communist? So I said, she went, aren't they evil? <laughs> I, that's what she said, aren't they evil? Yeah. Right? <laughs> so I looked at her, the first time I'd ever heard anyone, like, say it like that, and she was, yeah. like, being honest, she said, she's like, aren't they evil? Like, you know. So I was like, say, explain to her what it was, and I even said to her, I said, you know, think of the word, you know, commune, communism, yeah? yeah. He said, how can you get evil out of that? And, and the, th the thing is, I mean, this is deadly serious, Psycho yeah. psychologically, she never actually, she doesn't, it's almost like it's a, the word itself has been transcended. Yeah. Yeah? And yeah. It's, it's now, it's, there's a conscious sort of an attachment of emotion and negativity on it, where, yeah. where the word is, has almost lost its relevance to anybody outside of the left. Yeah. Now, I think that's a very, very serious issue. Yeah. And I don't know if, if we're going to stick with the word communism, we're going to stick with the word communism. I don't know how many generations after, after live and carry that name in order for that name to sort of default and start yeah. again for people to think, oh, what's this communism? That sounds like a good word. Oh, yeah, I know what communal means and blah, blah, blah. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah, so yeah. Do you think there's an argument 
that the word communism and communist, as much as I can understand why people are holding on to it, it's of such a, a rich and powerful history and, you know, and, you know, such wonderful heroic figures have, have classed themselves as communists. But yeah. is, it, is there an argument that it's time to ditch the word, not the party, you know, not the ideals, I'm talking about the linguistic word itself? No. Okay. No, not at all, no. So, so from everything I've just said, Yep. Yeah, and that was a that was a real blunt, a real like you know instant no, you know. Yeah. What what's what's your reason? What's the power? What's the power of the word still for you then? I think to reject the name is to reject who we are. Who we are? We are communists, and <laughs> you know we 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 will have to put a lot of work into changing the mindset of a lot of people, or you know their opinions of the word communist. But um, it it to scrap. The word to stop using the word is almost like giving up, giving up on who we are. Uh, it's just no, no, <laughs> not going to happen. So it's so it's a, it's almost <laughs> a battle. It's a battle line there, isn't it? It's basically yeah. right. Thou shall not cross. You know. <laughs> um, my yeah. The thing is, I know you're saying we are communists, but you're much, much more than communists. Communist is a word mm. that's related to the word communal. Yeah, and just gives a very basic idea of what your policy is about. It's not necessarily who you are. It's just really when you break it down, it's just a very basic shell of an idea of what you are. Communism itself is much richer and much more diverse than the word if you know what I mean, you, yeah. much more than the idea of living in communes and sharing stuff, aren't you? So, so you know, well, well, that's just an idea, isn't it? Like, you are the reality. The reality is you've got policies. The reality is you've got a certain consciousness. The reality is you've got a certain way you want to live. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the word itself is just a very basic ideal of what, what you are. So... Are you really that passionate about a word well, in dictionary? Like you've just said, it is just a word, so I don't understand why people are so afraid of it. And yet they are. Yeah. They are. So to them, it's a very negative word. Okay. Mm -hmm. To you guys, what I'm trying to say is, because it's not all that you are, epitomised in one linguistic word, yeah, is it not, could you not... I hate to use the word rebrand, okay? In fact, I'm not going to use it. Scrap that. I never said that. Um, <laughs> you know, is it not another word that encapsulates the same energy, the same philosophy, um, and yet it's as simple as this, believe me. If people can't associate it with that negative past under, you know, Mao and Stalin, yeah, yeah would it, is it not worth at least exploring so that we can just move on and say, right, if you don't like that word, we're bigger than that word, we're more than that word, so scrap that word, Let, let's use any word, this word will do, let's move forward. And that's what I'm trying to think of. For me, I've seen that much negative energy and people literally closing down mentally when you say words like communism and communist, that you can't even engage with them on, mm. a, on, on a serious level over the sake of a fucking word. <laughs> I think sometimes it's not time to swallow your pride, get rid of the word, and let's start get engaging with people again and say, I mean, I don't know, I mean, you, you were blunt before, I'm looking at your face, the viewers can't see your face, I can see you're not going to change your mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you can understand my point. Yeah? No, I, I, I understand, you can understand your point. point. And yeah, I mean, I, I suppose that, yeah, there is an argument there, but it's not something that I would go in for. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. And you know what? I can't see it with not pop what ninety nine percent of communists <laughs> because it is it is such a it's such a powerful word. It's a personal word, isn't it? It's almost like when you hear that on a personal level, there's a sense of pride there, and there is you know you your ears twitch and you want to know what people are talking about, don't you? When you hear this yeah, word, yeah. and it's, it's like a badge of honour in many ways, isn't it? Yeah. So no, I, I completely understand. Um. Right, okay, so let's talk modern day, um, CP, yep. um, UK. 
Mm-hmm. Now yourself, you're going to be you're trying to be an MP basically, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. You're trying yeah. to be an MP now. We've had a few guys on the show. We've had the Green Party that have got an MP. We've got we've had Respect on who've got an MP. You know, I mean, we've also had last week we had a, had a fantastic talk um, with the Socialist uh, Labour Party, um, and I ask this question every every time. Um, you know, I hope. You, you, you're realistic. You're a realistic person. Yeah. yeah. So, as a realistic person, I hope you are. Now, I'm sure we all, we all debate about, you know, what our foreign policy would be if we're in power yeah. and all that. But, you know, we're talking in the real world now. It's real politics and you want to try and be an MP. So, from your perspective, <coughs> your meetings and whatnot, mm-hmm. two questions. First one is, what? how does the Communist Party see itself today in regards to what influence does it realistically hold? Yeah. Mm-hmm. For what it can, it can impact on society right now, today, not in 20 years, 50 years, like now, in the elections yeah. that take place. Um, and for yourself, mm. you know, as a Communist Party member who's trying yeah. to be an MP, what are your realistic aspirations in a general election where, you know, we're talking first past the post here, people of the left always seem to panic, they don't want the Tories in, so they yeah. always vote Labour, yeah? Yeah, which, yeah. which is the big thing that's you know <laughs> be a struggle for for anybody outside of Labour. Um, so t- yeah, two questions: what, How does the Communist Party see themselves today? Um, you know, what relevance do you see themselves today? And then obviously yourself as as an individual, but who represents that party, trying to make you know uh, waves within our own community. So. Um, okay. Well, the Communist Party itself. I mean, we now have a membership of just over a thousand. Um, and that is always growing. I mean, as well, we've got the Young Communist League, who are our sort of youth wing, if you like, mm-hmm. and, um, which I'm also a member of and on the executive committee of. Um, and that's constantly growing as well. I mean, we are having an influence, and I think with the elections, um, I think our main point is to, you know, really bring working class politics back into um, the political discussion in the parliament I mean can can, can you imagine um, you know the sort of message that would send if a communist MP was elected in May <laughs> you know yeah it'd be a shock let's be honest sorry it'd be a shock it'd be a shock it would it'd be I a shock yeah. yeah yeah so so, but as far as the party is concerned, yeah, yeah, this is this is the great, the once great communist party that yeah. would have had the vast majority of, of the working class on its side. Now, as you say, it's got a thousand members. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, where does it see? How does it see its influence? Is it like like we spoke to a guy the other week um, from the Socialist Labour Party, and he was quite brutally honest. They're still at the stage where they're just trying to sow seeds in people's minds and just just really it's all about recruitment and ideas rather than any kind of actual belief that they're going to be in power overnight and we're going to take all you know you know is it is is that is it that sort of realism at the communist party is it is all about you know yes we're very small let's just try and keep opening up people's minds is it, is it that sort of level? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's along the same lines. I mean, we have to be realistic here, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, in the grand scheme of things, a thousand members, it doesn't sound a lot, but it's, you know, it's ever-growing. And yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's... Um, it's just my, my worry with the Communist Party, because it did reach such, such lofty heights not yeah. really that long ago... Yeah. I was just, I'm always concerned that maybe, you know, because you've still got some of the old boys in there that, that, that probably remember membership yeah, being, yeah. you know, in the hundreds of thousands, maybe, I don't know. Um, still sort of thinking that they're still in those times. It's just about, you know, a revolution coming and then we'll be back where we were. You know, it's, 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 are you saying that that sort of, that sort of, self-reflection of the party is long gone now and everybody is now basically we're a small small party yeah yes we were yes we were big once upon a time but we're very small now and and the the mindset is of a small party that's trying to grow rather than 
a small party that still thinks itself as a big party. Oh, no, I don't think we think ourselves as a big party at all, no. Okay. Um, we we recognise how small we, we are, realistically. Okay. But that doesn't stop us having aspirations for the future, you yeah. know. Yeah, 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 of course, yeah. Um, well, just, go, just related to that point, the fact that you come in this party was so big, mm. yeah, especially around the world, yeah. and, the, and the fact that, you know, in the space of maybe 50 years, maybe less, it shrunk to a thousand members. Is there, yeah. ever, is there ever a sense of self-reflection on how that actually happened? Now, is, when I say self-reflection, I mean, does it look inwards and say there was mistakes making, made by communism? Yeah. Or is it kind of of the opinion that if those capitalist dogs didn't feed misinformation type thing, we would be where we were. Is it, do you know what I mean? Is there a reflection on the mistakes that have been made? Um, or, or is it a case of the enemy's won for now, but we'll be coming back in force type thing? Because, um, because realistically, we're talking about when people relate communism to the downside of communism, let's yeah. say. You know, we're talking about we're talking about Mao. Um, yeah. You know, we're talking about Stalin. Yeah. We're talking about the police state of East Germany. Yeah. You know, we're talking about some seriously, seriously horrifying things that people do not want anywhere near their lives. Now, is yeah. that is that self reflection evident in the case of we will learn from all our mistakes, or is it just a case of? Well, it wasn't that we made mis- it. Was, yeah, we might have made mistakes, but generally speaking, it, if we wasn't counter revolutionaries getting involved, and if we weren't surrounded by capitalist countries pointing nuclear weapons at us, everything mm. would have been just fine. Um, like, well, it's it's generally a mixture of the two. I mean, we do recognise our mistakes. You know, it is. You know, we can't ignore what happened. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I mean, you know. But I think a lot of people ignore the good side of communism, you know, how, um, you know, if you, if you think about it, I mean, like, basing the whole of the Soviet Union, its entire history on Stalin is almost like um, basing England on the period of Richard III or something, you know, they, it's, a, it's a brief yeah, in, yeah, important, but it's still only a brief period of the history of the Soviet Union. I mean, it was there for a whole, like, 90 years or so. Mm-hmm. Um, and you, you, I think, yes, we recognise we made mistakes. Mm-hmm. But, you know, um, communism brought the Soviet Union from being one of the most backwards na- nations of, at the time to the second biggest you know powerhouse in the world and um, without the Soviet Union you know the Nazis would have never been defeated without the Red Army it, that just wouldn't have happened I mean I mean uh, if we're talking about Stalin specifically as well I mean the amount of betrayal um, between Churchill and Stalin, you know, over aid to Russia during, um, you know, during the Second World War. You know, um, when you look at 10 million Soviet soldiers died during the Second War as opposed to 326,000 British soldiers. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can kind of understand where the bitterness comes from, if you like. I mean, the Soviet Union was absolutely hammered from all sides. Yes, mistakes were made, but at yeah. the same time. Well, that's, know, yeah. No, I mean, obviously, you know, I appreciate the heroicism of of Russia, even under Stalin's, you know, yeah. leadership. It, not, none of that's really in question. It's it's kind of the the control aspects, isn't it, that people fear with communism when 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 yeah, they feel I suppose, like yeah. it's it's that sort of I suppose it epitomised in East Germany, I suppose where. You can have a, a modern state, um, such as East Germany, and yet the control that was in place, yeah. that's also in place in North Korea, 
mm. uh, so, you know that's also in place in China yeah. uh, and was also in place in Soviet Union it's that type of control on individual freedoms uh, mm. to create you know people say the socialist man they're trying to create the socialist man uh, within, yeah. a, within a very narrow um, paradigm and with ever these steps outside of that you know it, they can, the, the state was boom you know now I've got my own personal views on, on why control within militarized communism took place probably the key there probably just give it away is militarized you know yeah. for me personally when when it's a military power that takes over Mm-hmm. You're always going to get that rigid, um, that rigid sort of control on individual yeah, freedom, yeah. um, and you know, as opposed to, let's say, for example, a Venezuela where it was democratically yeah, yeah. elected. Yeah. Um, you know, there's that kind of argument, but but the Communist Party of Britain, I've always felt, harks back to the Soviet Union type era. So what we, what I'm really trying to get at is, has it have you evolved since events, yeah, yeah, or are you harking back to an era of of the Soviet Union? If if you came into power tomorrow, in your opinion, would the blueprint of the Soviet Union, which let's be honest, it was a successful blueprint. I mean, if it didn't run out of money based on you know, things like the nuclear arms race and the space race and all that. It might even still be here today. It wasn't yeah. that it was unsuccessful. It was that it was very controlling. Yeah. Um, but does the Communist Party hark back to those days and say, well, that is the blueprint of what we want for the future? Or, have, in your opinion, have you involved? No, you know, no, I think, I think we've evolved. I mean, what we really call for is um, a federal Britain rather than a totally centralised, you know, cent- centralised power Mm-hmm. kind of system you know we we definitely moved on I okay think, so just that. just just elaborate on that then so what, what what's the actual if you know if, if the communist party was was voted in uh in the election what do you mean by a, a federalist britain as opposed to like a vanguard of the working class because that is that's totally different isn't it that's totally separate from from a historical perspective of mm-hmm. what of what you know uh, marxist leninist communism is yeah. so so yeah do you just want to elaborate on that then that, that evolution do you think then well i suppose what that means is rather than um all the power and decision coming from one body one centralized body it would be very much like our party is run now um groups and committees you know according to different areas within britain mm-hmm. from street level you know, to the top rather than the top dictating to everyone. Mm-hmm. So um, we all have a say in how society is run. You know, every, everybody works together, you know. Um, so rather, rather than a, uh, if we take education, for example, rather than a, you know, a bunch of guys who know absolutely nothing about education um, in power, dictating oh this, this is how we should do this this is how we should do this no instead um we'd work with the people involved so like with with teachers with students with parents um to decide together the most effective way of um you know uh running the education system if you like mm-hmm Okay. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, no, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in many ways, when you, when you do go to communist countries, I mean, I, I spent f- five weeks in Cuba actually. Yeah. Uh, but when you also look at, I've, I've seen a lot of documentaries and you know, in China and whatnot. They do, they do say, this is their sort of propaganda. I don't mean that in a negative way because no, no, no. Uh, yeah. propaganda in a lot of countries is a positive. It's yeah, just yeah. a way of explaining. To the best well, it, possible, yeah. you know, the positives and what it's all about. So, um, a lot of the propaganda in communist countries is basically yes, we do have this centralized vanguard at the top mm. that, that, that never changes, but all them decisions that, you, that you've just mentioned there, if you, even like if you go to China, you go to these little villages, they always seem to be having little elections and whatnot where the people, you know, you got your candidates and that. So it's always like a, it's almost like there's a democratic, cons- continuous democratic process going yeah. on 
over everything. Yeah. Un- underneath that centralized committee. Yeah, yeah. At the top, that's always what you know. You see a, a lot. I've seen it in Cuba. Um, yeah. I've seen it in remote villages in China and documentaries. So it, it does happen. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, the criticism is, oh, it's rigged, you know, you, you can only vote in the Communist Party. So there is that idea, isn't there, that, that we have in the West that <clears throat> and let, uh, it's not really about the person. As such. So if you've got five people to choose from, but they're all from the Communist Party, that, yeah. that in the West is like, oh, how, how, yeah. can, how can that happen? It's almost as if, in, unless they're all wearing a different colour T-shirt, yeah. Yeah, it yeah. Does, it, it's not valid. Yeah. But but those five people are still five different people yeah. that have five different ideas <coughs> and you choose depending on either the person or the idea, don't you? Yeah. Who they, who they actually represent behind that is kind of irrelevant, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean it doesn't always matter. I mean if you if you've got a socialist candidate and what you want is socialism, that's what you should vote for. I mean one of the arguments um, we have is, is, I mean, obviously we we want um, a Labour victory in May, um, and but in areas where perhaps um, you don't have a communist candidate, <coughs> but your Green Party candidate is more socialist than your Labour candidate, then you'd, you'd vote for Green, wouldn't you? You know. Right, if, yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So you just want, you, yeah, that's it. Yeah, so you want left, it, it left wing people. A, a higher concentration of socialist MPs in Parliament yeah. than, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, I totally agree, yeah. Um, it's similar to, yeah, what I was saying about the five different colour t shirts. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. You know, if you've got, you can have five different types of socialists, mm. and, and that's fine because, you know, you want socialism. If you're happy with socialism, then that bit's already ticked off. But yeah. Within that, you've got a multitude of ideas, haven't you? Yeah. So, so that's like the argument of like your Cubans and, and your Chinas and that. They're saying, you think we just have this vanguard that never changes and we mm. fire off what needs to be done. But, mm. but what they would say is, yes, we have the Communist Party and yes, we are communists and that's the end of it, so get over it. But yeah. within that, we've got people yeah just people with mm-hmm. ideas and you vote for those people with ideas and yeah. you don't have to worry what party they come from because they all yeah. come from the communist party and it's just whether you like their ideas or not yeah so so in, in a sense so what i was going to say is yeah actually just got me train of thought back so <laughs> would you say being like a federal system yeah what i'm saying is within communist countries right now yeah. There is that propaganda that it is almost like a federal system. It's just yeah. that above that, there is that sort of vanguard of, of an executive committee. Now, for yourself, as a Communist Party member, mm-hmm. <clears throat> are you guys happy with the democratic process in the sense that traditionally communism is the end of the democratic process at that national level? It's almost like... It's, we, we are a communist. This country is communist. There's no getting away from it. There's no then going back to capitalism, blah, blah, blah. You know, and within that structure, you've got your federalist type way of doing things. Your yeah. ideal. ideal. Um, but times have changed now, haven't they? And, mm-hmm. and, you know, communism, once it comes in, when it used to come in, it used to be, right, we're communists now, that's the end of national elections. Yeah. yeah? But those days, especially, well, in the UK, it never happened, so, and they're probably not going to happen for a good while yet. So you guys happy to be within that system that you're actually traditionally dead against? Because that's quite an evolution, isn't it? It's yeah. usually capitalism or communism, but now it sounds to me that the Communist Party fits kind of snug into the capitalist electoral system, and even if you were voted in, I'm guessing you wouldn't even you wouldn't even try and do away with that electoral system, would you? Because that's not the way things go anymore. Is that right? Um, I believe that uh, no, actually, we wouldn't we wouldn't get rid of the democratic process as it is at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, 
<laughs> I, suppose, I, I suppose the point is to try and keep people on our side if we ever got into power, you know. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, there would have to be some kind of transition between capitalism and communism. You know, you, you've got to be realistic about it. You can't just jump straight into it. But... Um, but essentially, you are anti-capitalist, aren't you? So it, oh, yeah, definitely. If, if, yeah. if the Communist Party, it goes without saying, obviously, the Communist Party were in power for 20 years, but yeah. at some stage, they're going to do away with capitalism, aren't they? Because that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the uh, antithesis of it, isn't it? So, yeah. Which, which, yeah, is totally reasonable, being a communist. Um, it's just where, I'm just trying to figure out now where you fit in. It's almost like you're subversive, isn't it? It's sort of like, Rather than fighting against it, you're fighting it from the inside now, aren't you? And sort of sprouting out and hoping yeah. to do, push it so far to the margins, yeah. it becomes irrelevant. It must be that kind of tactic now, really, I, yeah? Uh, that's just probably the most effective way we have at this minute. I mean, we don't think the conditions for any kind of revolution right now, you know, are there. So... Mm -hmm. the best way I mean if you look at it this way we're we're a party for the working class you know we, we want to create class consciousness but if we were to ignore the democratic process which is the way working class people are involved in politics and such it would be ignoring the working class themselves mm -hmm. here's a question for you <laughs> why aren't you concentrating on the revolution why don't you just forget about, you know, the capitalist electoral system, mm. you know, and doing your little bit and trying to sort of uh, sprout up in it and, you know, and and, and, and spread. Um, and this has just occurred to me now, honestly. I'm just thinking, you know, communism really has always been about overthrowing capitalism, not, yeah. not working within it or in partnership with it. Mm. Um, was there ever a discussion you know of where that stopped being the case and then it was like, well, actually, let's try and work within it? Because the more I think about it now, the communism I know and the communism I know and love, you know, your Che Guevara communism, your Karl Marx yeah. communism, they were they were the smash and grab communists. They weren't, you know, let's, uh, let's hand out leaflets outside Tesco communists. Yeah. They were, let's... Get the working class on our side, and when there's enough of us, let's let's move in and take over. So uh, some fun, there's been a fundamental change there, hasn't there? There has been a massive shift. Um, I mean, obviously, I've been only been alive 18 years, so I can't I can't really mm. speak from experience, or I don't want to speak for other people. But mm -hmm. there there has seemed to be this this sort of change in. Um, sort of working class culture if you like I mean um, especially after the total devastation in, in the 80s the, the defeat of the miners strike yeah. um, I just what I'm trying to say is are you making any, think... are you making that much much gains politically mm. that you know if you're making loads of gains politically so, you know, you say you had 100,000 members and, you know, you were a couple of MPs. Um, I could understand perhaps more of the energy being put into it to, to undo capitalism in that way. But at the level you're at now, it's almost, yeah. it's almost a stronger argument to channel that energy into creating a revolution, much like the anarchists are now, you know, like, so for example, the Anarchist Federation, they're not a party. They're a movement that's trying yeah. to get people, you know, as you already said, you're trying to um, inspire people at the moment. You know, yeah. you're not really looking for political gains. But there is an argument, isn't there? Because, because you're at such a low level that, you know, you could just as much be successful in forgetting politics, forgetting, you know, um, working within capitalism, creating, yeah. creating the revolution itself. So that when that happens, well, you know, forget, you know, the, 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 pol the political bit. You, you already, you've done it. You know, it's another way to, to, to power into a revolution. Yeah. And revolutions are traditionally a communist thing. Yeah. So, is there a balance between? Is is there any work on on revolutionary type stuff, or is it simply all now forget revolutionary type stuff? 
we are actually a party within the capitalist system that we're hoping to one day get elected and then we'll do away with capitalism over time. Is, it, is that, has that been the shift? Um, I mean, it's very difficult to sort of say. I mean, we are, we are still very much a revolutionary party. We don't, we don't want capitalism, you know, that is something that we need to get rid of. But I think being so small as well is, is very difficult to try and organise you know, people, there, there seems to be this um, sort of feeling of apathy amongst the general public, you know, trying to get people to register for vote, let alone take up arms and, you know, um, sh shoot the prime minister or whatever. But it, it's... We're not condoning that on this show, thank you. <laughs> oh, no, we're not. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, you know, it's just one of those, I'm thinking that people don't like politics. In general, you know, look yeah. at the, look at the turnout, yeah, right? Yeah. So, but people have a a romantic, at the very least, a romantic sense of a revolution. So yeah. you could almost argue that it's more innate for people to 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 fancy a revolution than it is for them to go and vote for you know three monkeys that are all basically the same. Yeah. So and yet you you're channeling your energies on that you know the the electoral side that no one likes rather than the revolutionary side but anyway i think we've, we've discussed that too I'm, yeah it's obviously it's just something that came to me yeah. um and it's quite an interesting one for me personally how where that transition came but like you say you, you've been in a party and you know you're, you're 18 years old and these things they go back they go yeah. back a long long time uh, but that, that's absolutely fine it's just a you know it was a little little question i just just popped into my head um right Nice question for you now then. As a communist, it's rich with heroes, okay? Do you have a favourite communist hero? Do now, I? Now, I'm not going to say this to anybody else that comes on the show, but with communism, there is so many rich communists, isn't there? Yeah. Um, is, the, you know, is there a favourite of your of yours? Uh, mm. Oh. Or a number of favourites, one or two? Um... Well, I don't, I don't really have any favourites, to be honest. You know, I, I quite like the Wolf with their all quite like them all, yeah. Reasons. I mean, I, I, I like the whole idea of Marx and Engels going smashing windows whilst in the middle of writing, you know, the Communist Manifesto. It makes me giggle. Um, but, I mean, also, on a, it's, it, it, kind of also, it kind of makes them a bit more human than just, if you know what I mean, rather than just historical figures who wrote a book sometime, yeah. you kind of go, oh, well, they did, they did actually have, you know, feelings and wishes and they, they got angry too kind of thing. But, um, I mean, a favourite, if I had to have a favourite, it would probably be Che Guevara, to be honest. Che Guevara, well, yeah, he's the uh, most popular, and I think he's probably must, mine as well, Yeah. to be honest. There's uh, something about Che, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was everything once. He was an intellect and a warrior and a doctor. Yeah. And, and a, you know, a lover and a fighter. And he, he, he basically encapsulates everything, doesn't he? Yeah, uh, and, and the whole idea kind of went went on that journey and sort of saw everything for himself rather than, you know, this was something he was being preached to, you know. Yeah. He, you know, yeah. He found, he, found, he found the path himself, didn't he? Yeah. He went off on his motorbike and he came back a different man and... Yeah, and communism was his uh, his lifetime goal. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, good call, good call. Um, right, just lastly then, uh, Laura Jane, and thanks for your time tonight. I was just going to say, you know, for your own constituency, yeah. um, you know, the elections are coming up. Do you want to say a reason why, you know, anybody, why you want them to vote for you? Or if they come to um, a poll booth and they've got a choice between, you know, Labour... And yourself, or you know, somewhere else, but the Communist Party and, and Labour, you know, what do you think is important for them to know before they start to basically brick it and say, I don't want the Tories in, so I'm voting Labour? Is any have you got have you got any message about your own personal campaign or why you think people sh would should vote, you know, Communist over uh, Labour in current current days? Well. I think it's quite obvious that the Labour Party isn't particularly interested in the working class anymore. And I think that if people actually voted for what they believed in rather than um, constant tactical voting, then the world would probably be a very different place. Yeah. 
And for, and for your own constituency, have you got any messages for anybody that might be listening in uh, Devon and, and whatnot about what, what you're going to do for him? What you're hoping to do for him if elected? Well, um... Is there any particular concern you've got in your area that you, you, you're hoping to get involved in? <laughs> well, um, in Plymouth, I mean, itself, we've got, um, we've, we've got a dockyard at Devonport. So one of our big issues at the minute is that of Trident and just, you know, the Communist Party would scrap Trident, totally no argument whatsoever. We are not for nuclear weapons of any sort. Okay. I do apologise, I said Devon, didn't I meant Devonport, yeah. Plymouth, Sutton and Devonport, yeah. So yeah. it's a it's a it's a trident message, it's gonna be an anti an anti trident message, yeah? That's yeah. gonna be one of your main your main purposes if elected. One of them, yeah. I mean also we, we have um quite it there's the NHS is a very big issue in um in my sort of area at the minute. I mean we have a big hospital there, Dereford Hospital. And we we would move to reverse all privatisation that's been going on. It'd be going back into the public hands. Okay. And um, yeah, the, I mean, profit is not something that should be involved in healthcare at mm -hmm. all. It's disgusting. So, yeah. yeah. So the, the NHS and Trident two big issues for yourself on a local level. Yeah. If yeah. People, so if people wanna wanna vote, that's what they'll be getting. That's what they'll be voting for. Yep. Anti Trident and a pro NHS. Yeah. That's brilliant. Okay, and just 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 lastly, actually, we've got to talk about nationalisation. The Communist Party is very famous for nationalising. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much it. That's still an agenda. Yeah, that's still a oh, an, an, an essential, an essential. Yeah. So, in many in many ways, yes, there's been an evolution. Yeah. In regards to the mistakes that have been made, um, mm -hmm. hopefully in regards to the controlling elements of you know the past and whatnot. But essentially, it's a nationalisation party. Yeah? yeah, definitely. Um, is there anything that people might not realise about the Communist Party that that would be brought in if they were in power over the nationalisation? Is it a case of, I mean, we were talking before about the actual word, you know, communal. We we're talking about, is it communal farming? Is it this type of stuff? Is it is it going back to growing our own stuff, making our own stuff, and Union run firms yeah. and cooperatives. Yeah, that, that's, yeah, that's that's basically that's, the vision, yeah. isn't it? That's basically yeah. the vision, and that vision will never change because that's the essential, innate core of communism. Yeah. 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 Um, right. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I've really enjoyed that. Um, have you got anything you'd like to add, or anything before we go? You want to tell yeah. anybody over the Viva the Revolution? <laughs> yeah, yeah. the revolution. <laughs> um, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I know, I know you. I know you're a young lady, you're 18 years old. Is it? But is there anything that you've seen on the horizon that gives you sort of a hope for a revolution, or do you think we're still in a very capitalist epoch that could last for a good few years yet? Um, is there something there that you might have seen? I know last week we were talking to a guy there saying about Russell Brand and whatnot, but. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything that you've seen, you know, in, in, your, in your debates and you, when you've been out on the street and you've been talking politics? Is, have you seen any kind of mood change or it, in the short well, time that you've, you've been doing this? I mean, I've seen sort of um, more of an awareness, I think, as people, you know, have been hit harder and harder they, they, they go hang on, you know, something's not quite right here and suddenly sort of develop a political understanding. I mean, I've, people I've spoken to have, have known for years who have always gone, oh, politics is boring, you know, I, I, I don't want to get into all that, and suddenly going oh, Nora Jane, do you know what unions I can join, you know, that that kind of thing. Okay, that's very good. Yeah, yeah. I think the, the downfall that I've noticed uh, when I've been, I've been studying politics for many, many years in many countries um, it seems to be that people, you know, if you know, if they're a bit downtrodden, so they've lost their jobs, and then you know their pensions have been slashed, they suddenly yeah. get radicalised, and it's like, oh right, it's all about politics, and but yeah. it's a very, it's a very um, self-centred idea of I'm not doing well, yeah. yeah. So now I'm going to become a socialist because that's where everything gets shared out, so I'll never fall through the safety net. But then, really. Politics shouldn't really be about 
you, you as an individual should it, it should yeah, be no, try and understand politics and I'll say this to anyone as as a force for everybody that yeah, you know absolutely. in the whole wide world and even if it means that you yourself might have to lose something in order for others to gain that yeah. is the essential facts of, of true hu humanitarian politics isn't it it's yeah. not about oh no I've lost my job so now I'm going to join a union and you know I'm going to become a socialist so that um, you know I get I get a more comfortable living yeah, yeah. it's not really about that it's about opening your 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 third eye as it, as it were yeah. you know to humanity as a whole and what's best for humanity even if that yeah, means yeah. yourself might potentially lose something as a, you know we're a rich nation we will probably lose something but it's not about that is it it's about no. You know, it's about what's best for everybody at all times. So, Absolutely. well, thank you very much, Laura Jane. I've really enjoyed that. Thank you. Um, and yeah, good luck. Good luck in your um, candidacy. And I thank hope you, you. Do, I hope you do well down there. And there'd be, um, you know, if if they can get hold of you and, and get you working for them, that that be a fantastic thing for them. Um, okay. Well, thank you guys for listening. Uh, I'm not too sure we've got in the next couple of weeks, but I promise you we'll have sort of another another part or another group uh, for us to um, have a debate with. Any questions for Laura Jane? Have you got what's your Twitter there, Laura Jane? Um, I don't have Twitter. Oh, you don't have Twitter? You can find me on um, on Facebook, just Laura Jane Rossington, Communist Candidate, Plymouth Sutton, Devonport. You should be able to find me. Okay. Uh, you can message the page on there, or send me an email, or whatever. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, I wish you all the best. And thanks for listening, everybody, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Good night.